Civic is gone and I bought my dream car, a BMW M2. Now I'm sure some of you are a bit like, dream car, an M2? Well, yeah, this is my dream attainable car. If I could buy my dream car, which I'm really not in a position to do, then it'd be a Porsche 911 GT3 RS. However, the M2, or just M cars in general, have been a, a dream, a goal of mine for, for a long time. Back when I was a teenager, my friend's dad had an E36 M3 Evo and he took us out in it one day and I just remember being absolutely blown away and thinking, what an incredible car. Maybe one day I can own one of these. And ever since then, I've always wanted an M car. And now finally, I have my own. I picked this car up on Saturday from DT Performance and I'd say a massive thank you to Tom at DT. Uh, he's been incredible throughout the whole process and he sold me an absolute peach of a car. This car is immaculate. Um, hopefully that comes across in the video. It is a little bit dirty. I've driven it home and it's been out a couple of times since then. Uh, apart from that, it's just been tucked up in the garage, but the, the quality of the paint on it is just incredible. I'm in love with this color. Absolutely in love with it. And it's just in such good condition. And it's a pretty nice spec as well. So this video was just to reveal the car on the channel um, and I'm just going to talk over the spec a little bit. I have actually filmed another video which is my first drive and it was my actual first drive from DT home and that will probably follow this video uh, when I've got time to edit it. I'd always said that I couldn't change the car until we moved. Uh, if you watch my last video I explained a little bit in there that the Civic was kind of on hold. I didn't really do anything with it because I knew we were going to be moving and wanted to get the move over with. I knew I'd have this double garage once we'd moved and it would really set me up to be able to have somewhere to store the car, work on the car, clean the car. So now was the, the right time. The car is a 2018, which means it's an LCI model, which brings with it uh, a few different changes. So it has the updated LED headlights. It also has the updated LED tail lights. Uh, there's a few things that are slightly different in the cabin. Um, to do with the layout and the fit. Um, probably the biggest noticeable thing is a change to the cluster. So rather than the analog clocks that you got in the pre-LCI, now you have a kind of a digital analog hybrid. A lot of people say they're digital, but they're not. It's just an analog clock that is backlit. So when it's off, it appears black, but when you turn the car on, it lights up from behind and then you can see the dials. Of course, the, the dig digital screen in the bottom right hand corner is the same as it was on the previous model. In addition to that, the central screen is now touchscreen also, and you have the updated iDrive, iDrive 6. When I first started looking at these cars, I wasn't actually planning on getting an LCI. Um, a pre-facelift was more in my budget, uh, but the more and more I looked, the more I grew to love the, the new headlights, tail lights, and the, and the gauge cluster. So I thought it was worth spending that extra little bit of money to get that instead of just going for the pre-facelift version. Um, in addition to that, this car has got a few nice bits on it from M Performance. I'll admit that when I first got pictures from Tom of the car, I wasn't sure that I liked all of the bits that were on it, but now as I see it, now I've got it and I can see it as entirety, I'm actually a big fan of everything that's on the car and I won't be changing at least anytime soon the stuff that it's come with. So let's just run through some of the spec. The car has only done just under 12,000 miles, so barely run in. That's what, how I like to think of it. Um, and that was kind of key for me. I'd, I'm gonna be keeping this car for some time, so it's nice to start from a platform of quite low miles. In addition to that, uh, we have the M Performance front blades. I don't know if you call them. I mean, you'd probably call it a splitter if it went all the way across, but it doesn't. So these just these carbon pieces in the corner of the front bumper. Moving along the side, and um, we've got these, again, fins, side blades, I don't know what you'd call them. Um, again, in carbon fiber, M performance part. Uh, someone has stuck an M performance sticker on there. I'm guessing it's the guy that put them on there. I'm not sure about that yet. Uh, I'll probably leave it for now, but I think eventually I'll be taking that off. Coming around to the rear, we've got the M performance rear lip spoiler, boot spoiler, I guess you'd call it. Again, I wasn't planning on doing anything like that. I'm quite a big fan of the M2 in its standards form, because I think it just look, it suits the body line to just have that little lip spoiler, but now having seen it, I think it suits the car. 
Further around the back, the car comes with the M Performance exhaust. Again, this wasn't again this wasn't something that I was looking for. Uh, I quite like the sound of the standard car, but having now driven it and heard it in person, I'm so glad that I went for one with it. This is of course a valved system, and it comes with a Bluetooth remote which allows you to open the valve in the exhaust. When you're switching between the modes in the car, the car has Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus. There is a noticeable difference when you go from Comfort to Sport, definitely gets louder. If you want that extra level of volume, you can then activate the M Performance exhaust um, and you get even more of those kind of overrun burbles and cracks on some of the gear changes. So in the car, you've got this, which is the, the remote control for the exhaust, um, which allows you, as I previously said, to open the valves. God, I need to get a shorter lens. Difficult to get things in focus. So just a double tap of this button here opens the valves and exhaust. Now there is a funny thing with this. If you have a car that has uh, is fitted with a pre-2000 or 2017 or before M performance exhaust, you can literally just control the valve using that remote control. However, if you've got one after that, uh, BMW got themselves in a little bit of trouble to do with emissions and noise and they had to officially say that the M performance exhaust was just for track use and to that end they had to put in an additional system so if you go around to the boot in the boot there is now on this model of or this year model of car this red button so to actually be able to control the M performance exhaust you have to put the car into accessory mode or start it go and press that button and then on that specific journey, you are able to control the exhaust with that remote that I've just shown you. If you turn the car off, then it goes back to off. So essentially what that does is opens up the Bluetooth connection to the exhaust. Bit of a pain in the ass to do every single time you want to use the exhaust. However, I can kind of get over it. I think maybe, maybe, um, unofficially, I might be taking I might, be I might look into if there's any third party hacks that allows you to just bypass that button. Um, but for the moment, it's okay. I, I just have to remember to go and press that button before we go on a journey. So back to the exhaust. Of course, you have these uh, larger tail pipes uh, than the standard ones. I think they're larger than the standard ones, but they're definitely different looking. So you've kind of got the stainless steel and then you've got this carbon sheath that sits around the outside. Really like the look of this. Um, and this is just topped off by the uh, M Performance rear diffuser as well that's been fitted. That goes really nice. Inside you get the usual M2 kind of specs, so you've got this kind of Alcantara material with the blue stitching, this matte carbon effect here, which follows through into the cabin, and you've got matte, matte carbon effect here and here, I really don't think it's real carbon fibre, but it looks good enough to me, blue stitching on the centre console, blue stitching on the seats, and the little M emboss there. <coughs> Another big thing that people kind of say about the M2 is it was I don't, I don't know how you want to phrase it, but it didn't come with quite the same spec levels as say an M3 or an M4, but I'll explain in my first drive video why I didn't want an M3 or an M4. And actually it doesn't bother me. These seats are really comfortable. And I think if I was to look to do anything, then potentially I would just source uh, a secondhand set of M3 or M4 seats, or maybe even some M2 comp seats. If I could stretch that and replace them to just make bring that cabin up a little bit. But they are perfectly comfortable and they will definitely do for now. The car of course has the Harman Kardon system. I'm actually quite impressed with the, the sound of this but I am coming from a Civic where the sound system wasn't particularly great. Um, I just think this inside is a really nice place to be. And the final thing which, again it was another thing that when I saw the pictures I wasn't 100% sure on it, was that the M Performance wheel. When Tom told me it was the M Performance wheel I got a bit giddy and was like, ooh, I hope it's the one with the LEDs in the top. Although, I don't know if I'd ever buy it myself because I think it's a bit gimmicky, but it does look very cool. And it wasn't until I saw this in person, I was like, actually, I do really like this wheel. My first thought was, yeah, I'll get it. Maybe I can just sell this wheel and I'll just get a fully retrimmed wheel from say, Royal Steering Wheels, just in Alcantara. However, now I've got it, I do really like, as I said, I really like this one. Half leather, half Alcantara. You've got the red and blue BMW stitching on the inside. And again, more matte carbon on the center spoke of, of the wheel with a nice little M performance badge. I don't think I can say how much uh, or how 
I don't think I can say how happy I am with this car. Uh, it's absolutely stunning to drive. It's a completely different different thing from the Civic. Uh, the Civic was almost, a, dare I say it, safe. It's super quick, but just you could be silly in it to a degree and it would just sort itself out. This thing just needs to be treated with a little bit more respect. Not driven it enough to feel fully confident with it, but it's it's like a spaceship. It's so quick in a straight line and through the corners, it just feels really, really planted. For me, this was the only car that was gonna replace the Civic. And I don't mean that because the Civic was so hard to replace, but in terms of what I wanted to spend um, and it being such a, a life goal for me to own one of these M cars, it was always this. So for the last year, I've been looking at them, pining over them. I think once I flirted with the idea of an RS3, just the, for the noise, However, I think once you got over the straight line performance of that car, I'd have found it a little bit boring with it being four wheel drive. This is definitely more exciting being rear wheel drive and I'm really looking forward to, to pushing it on a bit more, doing track day and really getting to grips with this, with this platform. Now I'm gonna round this video off here. Um, as I said, I have recorded a first drive video which will probably go live on the channel within the next week. So if you don't wanna miss that, then please do subscribe uh, there's going to be plenty of videos with this car now i've got it and we're in the new house it's all systems go in terms of making this car mine and i've got plenty of modifications that i want to do to it um so without saying too much the first thing i think we'll be addressing so if you want to see some of that then please do subscribe uh, if you enjoyed this video if you like the M2, then please drop a like. Or uh, if there's any ideas for the kind of content you'd like to see with this car, then drop a comment below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again real soon.